<laughs> Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. Good morning. This is our fourth week and our fourth lesson, and we're just excited that we have the opportunity to share Jesus with you. you know, Joey and I are still in Texas. It's hot down here, and it's raining a lot. But other than that, it is a, a nice place to be if we can't be at home. So we look forward to the time we can get back to California and that we can meet in person and hug each and every one of you. Not right away, but we will. We will. There we, will be hugging again. This week we're going to study about the conversion of Paul. If you remember last week, we talked about Philip and the Ethiopian and how Philip led and explain the gospel of Isaiah to the Ethiopian man. This week, we're going to study about how Saul, the Pharisee, became Paul, the apostle, and what an exciting story it is. Remember in the beginning of the early church, shortly after the day of Pentecost, where there were 3,000 people added to the church. The church was growing and spreading out from Jerusalem into different cities and different areas of the country. But while it was growing, it was also creating problems from the Jewish uh, leaders' perspective. They were becoming angry that people were becoming members of the way, which is what they called the early church, the way. So we'll see that one of the most aggressive leaders from the Jewish faith was a man named Saul, who was a Pharisee and was per persecuting the Christians very, very aggressively. So we're going to read from Acts. We'll start at chapter 9. I'm going to read verses 1 through 9. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bound them to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone from shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, neither ate nor drank. So when we talk about the Bible stories, this one's usually called uh, Paul or Saul meets Jesus on the road to Damascus. And what, what we learn here is that Saul, he would track down Christians, almost like hunting them, and take them in chains back to, New, back to Jerusalem. And, you know, he, that sounds really strange, but that, that's what he did. And, and he did it because he thought he was serving God by putting an end to the spread of the gospel. Well, what was this Saul's background? Well, he went after the people of the way because he thought that he was protecting the Jewish faith. He, he didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah, and he thought that this was a false religion that he was trying to put an end to. As we study these Bible verses today, why do you think there's hope in what we read? Well, because they tell us that nobody's, nobody's beyond hope. Nobody is beyond salvation. 
the story of, of Saul on the road to Damascus proves, tells us that Jesus' love can save anybody, anyone, no matter what they've done. So no matter how bad we've been. No matter how bad we've been, Jesus' love can cover anyone. And what is the, what do we learn about being thankful through this, these difficult chapters that we're studying? Well, we can be thankful that God has chosen us. We didn't have to grow to be adults who would cause a whole lot of problems for everybody. Although, that, that's, that's a hopeful person too when they read Jesus' word and, and accept them into his heart. Because we, have, we know we've been chosen and we can spread his word and we can bring this good news to other people. Even though we're, we make mistakes and we aren't us always as obedient as we should be. But Jesus has saved us and will use us to spread the gospel to others. So we just we can be thankful that with all our faults. With all our faults. He is uh, he says we're worthy to be used of him. It's just true. All of this is true. And you know, that morning Saul made some amazing discoveries. Well what do you think what kind of discoveries did he make? I mean well, this was a an outstanding morning. He goes blind. He's hearing people talking, and there's nobody there. I mean, this had to be one a little scary. Yeah. And uh, you know, to be all of a sudden blind would would be something that would cause concern. It would. It would. But at the end, at the end of the day, as, as he as he encountered the Lord on the road to Damascus, he discovered that Jesus is alive which turned him, and the gospel is real, and he learned that he was a sinner in need of salvation, and uh, this is, this is the, he had faith, he was a man of faith who believed in God, and now he learns that God has sent the Messiah that he promised. That had to be pretty exciting. That was pretty exciting for him, I feel quite certain. But we know of people today that had black lives, and they met Christ and asked them to be their savior and instantly changed their attitudes towards other people. People whose hearts were were like stone yeah. and, and Jesus turned those into hearts of love. We do. He can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So we read in uh, Acts 9 10 through 14 it says now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him, the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Taurus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered the Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. So now we introduce a, a new person named Ananias. He was a uh, member of the way. Uh, the Lord chose to use him to minister to Paul. And uh, he was willing, even though he knew Paul was a kind of a scary guy. He, but the Lord said, do this, and he said, yes, Lord, I will. Well, how did I, Ananias know about Saul? Well, Saul had quite the reputation. He was known for persecuting uh, members of the way, in, especially in Jerusalem. But he would go, he was on his way to Damascus, which is 150 miles away. And in those days, that was probably a week's journey. Mm -hmm just to arrest 
members of their way. So, and he was also known for overseeing and encouraging the stoning death of Stephen. And Stephen, if you recall, was the first martyr of the church. So, so Stephen, when we call him a martyr for the church, that, that means he died because he died protecting his faith. Yes, he was stoned to death for proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And Saul encouraged that stone. Well, how did, how did Ananias respond to God's instructions? Well... Did he think it was a good idea? I think he was a little concerned, <laughs> to say Sounds the like, least. Yeah, just that. But he did exactly what God told him to do. And we will, in our Christian walk, be asked to do things that sometimes we're not sure about. But if we have our faith in God, we know if we follow his direction, it'll be the right thing. We know through God all things are possible. All things are possible. He is a great God. And we never want to do anything that limits God's ability because God chose people to be his messenger of the plan of salvation to the unsafe world and uh, he could have done it many different ways but he chose us humble human beings to be his messenger so we always need to be ready to serve God Amen to that so reading through Verses 15 to 19. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And laying hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he rose and was baptized. So when he had received some food, he was strengthened. Then he spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. What do you think... Uh... Ananias's or God's plan was for Saul. Well, I think that what God had planned was that Saul the persecutor would become Saul the apostle. Well, that's a big change. It's an outrageous plan. Who would have ever thought that? How, how would how could he change so much so quickly? Well, I I think that's a plan that only God could carry out, could make happen, and I think that. Saul changed so much by receiving the Holy Spirit into his heart and through his obedience to Jesus. Well, we know this Paul wrote a great deal of the Old, or excuse me, of the New Testament. And he started many churches throughout the region and even in different countries. Now, is this the same Paul that we were calling Saul earlier? This is the same Paul that used to be Saul. And the reason that he could do this is because God had a plan for a beautiful ministry for Paul. And he knew that Paul would work very hard and he would often suffer for Jesus. And he would do this to spread God's word. And God knew that he would do that and work that hard once he became a believer. So as we, as we look at the changed life of Saul, from Saul to Paul, we understand that our lives are changed by a personal relationship with Jesus. And, and not only that, though, we see in Paul's case... He didn't just sit on his hands. He got busy. He got busy. Doing God's work. He got busy. He got busy. 
So now in Acts 20 through 22, we read, immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogue, that he is the Son of God. And then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on his name in Jerusalem and had come here for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that Jesus is the Christ. So Paul immediately started preaching. He becomes a Christian. The Holy Spirit gives him the words to speak. And he starts preaching in the synagogue. So it is amazing. He 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 did that immediately. Like you said, he got busy, right? How how do you think he was able to do that? Well, if we remember in the verses we read, when Ananias came to Saul, he laid hands on him, and when he laid hands on him, he received the Holy Spirit because Paul was in a humble heart and knew he was a sinner and knew he needed salvation. So when Ananias laid hands on him, he received the gift of the Holy Spirit. God promises that he will give us the words when we try to share Jesus' good news with others. And I guess God did that for Paul. Well, how do you think Paul was proving he Prove Jesus Christ. Well, I think that he was proving that Jesus was the, was the Christ, was the Messiah, for sure. I think that he did that mainly because everybody could see how much his life had changed, and they they could see that it was visible. It, his new story played out before them, and it, and he was a Pharisee, and as a Pharisee, he knew the scriptures. So he, he knew what the prophecy was of what Jesus or the, uh, the Christ would do. And his, he, he, he was now able to see those scriptures in a whole new way and go out and do what the Lord had told him to do. So what we, what we have in closing is that we don't have to be an expert in the Bible. Do we have to be perfect in every way? Nope. Nope. What we have to do is be open to God's leading us in the direction and following that direction. We always want to be prepared to be able to share the gospel with anybody that God puts before us. And that's what Paul was doing. Paul didn't have all the answers yet, even though he was a Pharisee and he knew a lot about the uh, what we call the Old Testament or the Hebrew writings. He was just being filled with the Spirit. The Spirit was guiding him, giving him the courage and the words to speak about Jesus Christ in a bold way and in a way that convinced a lot of people that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. So like, like Paul, Jesus' love can change us. Absolutely. For all eternity. For now and for all eternity. Yeah. And and we, like Paul, can go out and tell others about Jesus. Yep. That is the the method that God has chosen to spread the good news of Jesus Christ his son is through us humans. Including you. All of us. All of us. So be bold in the faith. Be ready to share your gospel or to share the gospel with your friends if they inquire about it or you being led by the Lord. Always be sensitive to the leading of the Lord. So uh, we will see you next Sunday uh, via the internet. And we look forward to uh, bringing you message number five. And would you, Mr. Rudy, lead us in a prayer before oh, we go? Absolutely. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful 
that we have the opportunity to be able to share your word with our young people, Lord. We know there's difficult times. Uh, it's the COVID-19. It's the unrest in the cities that we see on TV so much. But Lord, we know that we can have calmness and assurance by resting in you, Lord, because you will, and only through you, can we have a calmness of spirit and a surety of the things to come. You have made your promises to your people. You cannot break your promises. It's not in your nature to ever break a promise. So we just claim that assurance of who you are and that you are in control, even though the world seems to be spinning in many different directions, Father. We know that ultimately your plan for our earth and for your people will be fulfilled. So we just, again, thank you for our young people. Thank you for this uh, technology that we can share uh, a Bible story with them some 2,000 miles apart, Lord. And uh, we ask that you would bless each one of our young people and look after their parents and their siblings and we lift up our church to you, we lift up our pastor to you and we just uh, we just want to give you all the praise and glory and know that you are in charge in Jesus name, Amen Amen